A startling new study to tell you about now linking overweight men and prostate cancer. Dr. Samadhi, what can you tell us about this? I mean, prostate cancer is the leading diagnosed cancer in men. It is the second leading cancer killer of men behind lung cancer. Well, that's right. And prostate cancer actually kills about 30,000 men every year. So it is a serious disease. It's a silent killer and therefore there are no symptoms. For a lot of men, they have to go for a screening to find out if they have prostate cancer. Now the risk factor for prostate cancer has been always aging. As we get older, the risk goes up. African Americans and race plays a role. Family history is a huge risk factor and now we're looking into obesity as perhaps one of the risk factors for prostate cancer. A recent study looking at over 6,000 patients followed them for about 14 years and what they found if, if, if they adjust for everything else, obesity alone can increase the risk of prostate cancer by 57 percent, a serious, serious risk factor. Now the big question is exactly what is it about obesity that can cause this and there are right. a lot of conflicting theories out there. What we know is that the fat around our stomach can convert testosterone to estrogen, something called ar aromatization. And estrogen alone can cause cell proliferation and prostate cancer, so that's one theory. The other one is really perhaps there are some insulin growth factors that in the diet, red meat and really high fat increases the insulin and insulin growth factor and that causes cell proliferation. So the big message out there is try to stay fit. If you have family history and you're obese, you need to be really screened by your urologist and check your PSA. That's a very important point. But you said that it's silent. So in terms of you know, looking at anything happening to you physically, you can't really tell. You have to get tested. And we've talked about this on the show before. This is one of the challenges I face as an internist. How do I screen a patient for prostate cancer? I follow their PSA. I look for trends. I do a digital rectal exam. David and I were talking before we came on. Is a digital rectal exam harder to do in an obese patient? This study also had a subgroup of 494 patients, which looks like there's more precancerous lesions in, in the obese, possibly because people because urologists may not all be equally good at biopsying patients that are obese. And I want to throw that back to David because we've talked a lot on the show about medicine as an art. Now, I, I know for sure you're excellent at this prostate biopsy. How good is everyone? And, and are they hard, is it harder to actually biopsy an obese patient? Well, it's a very good point because a lot of times we use ultrasound to do the biopsy and there's a lot of hit and miss. So the question is how many cores actually you take, what kind of ultrasound you use. And recently, that's a very good point that Mark is bringing up, is that we are using more of MRIs guided biopsies so we can actually locate where the cancer is instead of just shooting in the dark. So that's, that's a big part of this is that ultrasound can miss and what they found among the obese patients something called high grade pain or precancerous lesions are found more among obese patients. The other interesting part of this is that the western diet and the western diet is important because it's all about red meat and sugar and fat as opposed to fruits and vegetables and we know that Americans have more prostate cancer than the Japanese but when Japanese migrate to US the rate of prostate cancer goes up so our diet plays a huge role in, in this it's just not genetic but this diet so stay away from red meat cut down your how, sugar I mean, how much we've talked about this before like a steak or a hamburger once a week, twice a week? Do we know how much is too much or not enough? Once or twice a week is not going to change, you know, this. But if you are a real red meat eater and if you put a lot of sugar in your diet, you need to watch out for this. So there's a truth right. about the diet and cancer. All right, be careful. There's a red meat and sugar. That's the great advice. They say you are right. what you eat. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and uh, we need to all eat that Mediterranean diet. We've talked about that with the olive oils and the fish and the chicken and all it, that. It so does work. We that, endorse it here. That's the advice for <laughs> It does us. work.